Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Look North. And I feel very privileged, you know, to be able to share with you the opening of the first Maggie's Centre in Yorkshire in the grounds of St James's Hospital. It has taken five years and six million pounds to make this place a reality, but now it's open to help those with cancer and their loved ones. It's a lovely place, it's welcoming, it's, it's that support that you need. This extraordinary building has been designed to inspire, but also to feel like a home from home for anyone touched by cancer or who needs support. Also coming up on tonight's Look North. In football, Sheffield United women are through to the Continental Cup quarter-final for the first time ever. You know, words like uh, remarkable, extraordinary are possibly overused, but I think they do apply to this Maggie's Centre. As soon as I came in the door, I was uh, met with a welcoming care, a real hope and a real inspiration as well, because this is a place which provides emotional and practical support to anyone who is touched by cancer. A few facts and figures. The 23rd Maggie's in the UK, but this is the first in Yorkshire. Five years in the planning, £6 million in the building. And it was inspired by one remarkable lady called Maggie Keswick Jenks. This was her mantra, listen to this. We shouldn't lose the joy of living through our fear of dying. Well, a health correspondent to Jamie Coulson went over to Wakefield and started to chat to it with a lady called Karen who has can cancer, getting great care, of course, at Pinderfields, but is finding what is happening here is also proving very, very effective as well. A kind of home from home. It's going to be a sharp scratch now, OK? Really sorry. I have been diagnosed with secondary breast cancer. The cancer initially started in my breast and spread to my lymph nodes and I spread to my liver. Okay, so I'm going to get your samples from it now. The worst part for me is knowing that it can't be cured. It's thinking about my kids. How long am I going to be here for my kids? So we've got for Karen, Kilcommons, we've got Trust Who Is Mab. It's 336 milligrams in sodium chloride. Which Karen Kilcommons is secondary breast cancer can be treated but not cured. In the last year, the 50-year-old has undergone surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. It's been physically punishing and emotionally draining. Some days I try and block it out of my mind. And then it, it just all comes back. Hello there. Hi, welcome Hi. to Maggie. Thank you. Hi, Thank you. come on in. All right. Thank the you. new Maggie's Centre for Yorkshire is there for patients like Karen when they need it most. The charity provides free emotional and practical support to patients and their loved ones. Everything from professional help to a cup of tea. There are now 23 Maggie's centres in the UK built in the grounds of specialist cancer hospitals and each has its own breathtaking design. The centres take their name from Maggie Keswick Jenks, a patient who wanted to create a new approach to cancer care. So this is our kitchen area and this is kind of the hub of any Maggie's. It costs £6 million to bring Maggie's to Yorkshire. Some of it was raised by Karen at a time when she never considered she might be the one needing help. I've had like 10 months of treatment and you just keep going and going with it. And like now I think emotionally it's hit me more than ever in a way when I look back at what we've been through. And so going to Maggie's to me now is the ideal time for me to go. The centre will definitely be a hub for people with cancer and their families and friends. So we will be helping people through treatment, through um, the end of treatment, and managing that stress when they're going through such a difficult time. It's just so welcoming. It's lovely. It really is. Really is a special place. Thanks for coming okay, in. Thank you. Might I see okay. you again? Yeah, it will do. Thank you. you Bye. 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 It's that support that you need. It's that you know they offer the support that you need. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to take each day as it comes. 
The, lo the location of the Maggie Centre here is perfect really because we're just a stone's throw away from the internationally renowned Leeds uh, Cancer Centre which of course uh, treats uh, patients from all over our region. And now patients and their families can drop in here and get extra help if they need it from psychotherapy to a nice cup of tea, and I've got a few of those this afternoon as well. Uh, I'm joined now by Alison Chatton, a blood cancer nurse specialist, and Carmel Facer, a lung cancer nurse. Can I start with you, first of all, Alison? Uh, how does Mag Maggie's complement what's going on day to day here at St James's Hospital? Yes, firstly, can I just say thank you so much for Maggie's for coming here and so close to our lovely hospital. Um, I look after patients with blood disorders, and the treatment pathways can be very long and very complicated. Um, we are a regional centre, so we take patients and, and obviously relatives and friends have to visit here. So it's an ideal spot for the, when the patients are an inpatient for such a long time, five to six weeks, for them to come here and get support. And in between treatments, our patients go home for about a week to ten days with each cycle of treatment for leukaemia. They can come here and access the services as well. Can I ask you, Carmel, how important is it that this place is, what I say it is, it's a beautiful, inspiring place. It has to be different from what goes on there, isn't it? Absolutely, because obviously that's a hospital. It's bright, it's stark, it's clinical. And when patients go there, they're quite often given distressing or sad news. So what we're encouraging patients to do is to use this facility almost like a buffer between the hospital and then going home to dealing with their, their lives. So it's a brilliant building. It's calm, it's quiet. It's a place where people can come and sit and reflect on what they may have been told in clinic and obviously get this amazing support from the staff here within the building. Early days yet, Alison. Have you noticed an impact already? Well, I'm hoping in the new year to start a survivorship clinic for patients that are three years out from leukaemia. Every time they come back to the hospital, even 10 years later, uh, they still have that anxiety of coming for a blood test and wondering what it's going to be at the end of the day. So I'm hoping in the new year to then run a nurse-led clinic out of this building I think what you were saying before is so interesting, Carmel. If you're frightened of hospitals and nobody likes coming into a hospital, mm. this is not frightening in any shape or form, is Absolutely. It? You know, you can look around the building and just see what's, what's here. There's lots of beautiful things to almost distract you from what's going on on the outside in that huge building opposite us. So for patients and the carers, the patient experience is going to be so much more enhanced by having this building within the um, within the grounds of St James's. I like the idea of the informality of it as well. You don't need an appointment, you just turn up. It is, it's fantastic and also a very short walk away from our hospital and um, that's, that's it. People can access services when they need it. So if they come to clinic and they're having a particularly bad day, we can just say, oh, why don't you just go over to the Maggie's yeah. and get support. It's going to enhance everything that's happening here already, isn't it, Carmel? It is because, um, you know, there's lots, of, um, there's lots of support within the building, not just the actual architecture and what's around us, but there's staff here that are there to help and support patients and the families and carers in times where they are often in great distress. So for us as nurses, it, it enhances our role, it makes it better for the patients and the families and carers. Carmel, Alison, thank you very much indeed uh, for talking to us. Let's have a, a bit more of a detailed look now at this uh, wonderful building. It's actually called and referred to as the Architecture of Hope. Well, Phil Bodmer has been speaking to the uh, Chief Executive and we also wondered what the original Maggie would make of it all. On a thin sliver of land in the busy grounds of St James's Hospital is a place of calm. The new Maggie Centre is there to support anyone touched by cancer. The already exquisite design will only become more beautiful as the gardens flourish into the architect's vision. Well, if you think it's impressive from the outside, step inside and it's even more visually striking. But what becomes apparent is the sense of calm and total relaxation. Well, we're absolutely overwhelmed with joy at what we've been able to achieve here. Dame Laura Lee is the chief executive of Maggie's, but she used to be Maggie's cancer nurse. For more than 20 years, she has helped to spread Maggie's message that people should not lose the joy of living through the fear of dying. Laura, we're here at the kitchen table. Just tell me how much or how significant this part of a Maggie Centre is. 
It's, it's really significant because when you arrive in the Maggie Centre for the first time, you'll be led over to the kettle, um, it will boil, you'll make a cup of tea together and then you'll come and sit here with the cancer support specialist. And part of what the kitchen table signifies is that you're in somewhere safe, that you're with family, that you're not alone, um, that there are others who understand what you're going through. Thomas Heatherwick was the architect. How pleased with what he's created are you? I think Thomas Heatherwick has created a miracle. It was the only little patch of green grass that the hospital had available. It was on a slope, um, but it had extraordinary views and we wanted to keep that garden um, available. We also had to raise the money, um, so we've had extraordinary support from the community across Yorkshire to make this building possible. So Laura, just tell me about this space. So this space is a sitting room in Maggie Centre that will be used for people with cancer and family members to come in and be part of support groups that our clinical psychologists would facilitate. It's very much a home from home. It could be somebody's living room, couldn't it? What sort of difference practically does it make to a patient? Yeah, I think this homely environment makes it a safe place for people to be and a place where it allows that opening up of a conversation about the fears and worries that they might be going through. How much is a centre like this needed in Yorkshire? I think it's hugely needed. Um, you have one of the largest cancer centres here in the UK, so the volume of people that are having to go through cancer and the impact that cancer brings, not just for the person with cancer but their family and friends, is enormous. What do you think Maggie herself would have made of this place? Oh, I think she would have been overjoyed to not only just the quality of this beautiful building, but to be here in the heart of Yorkshire, to be able to have a Maggie Centre to meet the needs of people with cancer that are going through this significant centre is, is extraordinary. In a moment or so, I'm going to be talking to Amanda Proctor, who will run the uh, centre here. But first, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Jenny Paul Hill and her daughter, Laura. Jenny, you've got uh, advanced kidney cancer. Can I ask, first of all, how are you? I'm really well at the moment, thank you. So how is this centre going to help you, do you think? Um, I think it's going to offer a, a safe place to come when you've had your clinical appointments. Um, sometimes the information you get in those appointments can be quite difficult to um, cope with and, and it's somewhere you can come um, and feel you can talk through your fears and, and anything else that's on your mind. I know, Laura, that you've, you've sampled uh, with your mum, I think, Newcastle, when uh, that was your first example of it. Mm. So this must be an absolute godsend to have this quality care here. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's um, our first experience was in was in Newcastle and was just really positive. It came at a time when we were kind of all over the place and really struggling. So to come to somewhere like this, that where you could just kind of yeah unburden yourself and 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 kind of yeah talk and and discuss and and get to a more positive place really was was really good. Yeah. I just love the way that you're so philosophical about everything, Jenny. Does that? help with what's going on here it's the mantra of what's going on here yeah i think it was the first place since my diagnosis when we visited the uh, maggie center in newcastle that i had a taste of something positive to come from this disease um it was a very dark time and at a time when you know you think you're okay but you're not really well we oh, fingers crossed for you of course to uh, continue you. your recovery there can i ask you amanda wh what's the day-to-day -day logistics here mm -hmm. so people can just come in so whether it's yourself or your family friends anybody can come in at any point you're welcome to come through the door and have a warm welcome it might be around um, money worries and you can meet our benefits advisor aisha it might be that you just want to talk through things with our cancer support specialist, Helen, or it might be to just meet people in a similar situation around the kitchen table. You're open five days a week, that's right, isn't that's it? Right. So already, I suspect, the name of Maggie's is making a big, big uh, impression on people. We're already seeing people that are, are coming to the centre and then coming back to the centre. We've had examples of, of big differences and small differences for people coming in. Now, you're, you're hoping to get 30,000 people through here in a year. That's a massive task, isn't it? It is, and we're doing a lot of work with the, with the clinical teams to um, make sure people, everybody, everybody's aware of us here and that people can just come in. I know that the quality of your staff is so important as well. We've already seen some of them now. They, they talk really well. They're passionate, aren't they, about what they're doing? 
Yeah, it's, and that's really important that we have um, health professionals here in the centre that can provide that expert care. So you're open now, but basically it's going to be a big, bigger launch, is it, in January, or is it just going to be a, a gradual? Yeah, so we're open now for people to just come in, and then we start to run our programmes in January, February time. So that could be around managing stress through, the, through those difficult times. It could be at the end of treatment, where it's difficult to know what happens next. Amanda, lovely to talk to you. Jenny Thank and Laura, you. thank you very much indeed as well. Just to give you some bold facts now, talking money, this is a charity. It will cost £2,500 every single day to run. So obviously there'll be many appeals that you might like to contribute throughout the course of the year. When you see them, be as generous as you can. With that, I hand you back to the studio. Harry, thank you. It really does look a wonderful place, doesn't it?